from the very inception, my mother, the Dangazunt, took the lead effort to organize this Mifza. And uh, she's the most suitable to share some things that we probably never heard before about the early days of the Smifza and uh, the special Heiras and certain anecdotes that she had with the Rebbe with regarding to Mifza Meshek. So without further ado. Um, hello, everybody. I can't see anybody, but whoever's there. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase because I don't know how much time we have. And everybody knows that when the Rebbe says something and the Rebbe wants something, so we, we as Hasidim, we're going to do it. And I got very keyed up somehow feeling that I have to do something. And 50 years later, I'm still feeling the Rebbe's Rochus and the Rebbe is pushing us to do more, and the Rebbe is waiting for us to do it. The Rebbe is really expecting us to do it. There's no slacking off. So I want to tell you that I'm very, very excited that we're approaching 50 years because somehow it's hard to believe that I've been doing this for 50 years. And I feel like a very young woman. How could 50 years go by? But I feel it's all the Rebbe's Rochus and the Rebbe's inspiration that's pushing all of us. And wonderful women and wonderful girls in school that are just doing so much and we have to just do more and more because I've been waiting for us to reach every single Jewish woman, every single Jewish girl, and that they should all add the light that they light to become a very large avuka, like a very big uh, flame, a very big, uh, like a, and that's going to bring the gu of the gullahs to an end. That avuka, that big Flame is going to bring Mashiach. So I want to just tell you a few things that I think you do not know. A lot of things you do know, maybe this you don't know. Just one week after the Rebbe spoke that Sicha on the 24th day of Elo, on Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe said that in order to get girls to be interested in lighting candles, he wants to give them a gift. He wants to give them two dimes of his money as a gift to them if they decide to light Shabbos candles. And the Rebbe announced that anybody that has association with groups of principals of schools or, or camp directors or day camp directors or any kind of groups that children, girls come to, if they come with a list of the names of the girls and their mother's names, they will get two dimes that are the Rebbe's dimes as gift to them. The Rebbe then said, in other countries, people should get the people, the uh, organizers, to get, get uh, uh, coins in the amount of 10 numeric equivalent, he will pay them back. So in France, they got whatever money it was in French money and in Israeli money, in English money, etc. in all the different countries. And the Rebbe said he will pay them back. It'll be his gift to these girls. In America, the Rebbe gave out the dimes, and I was asked to facilitate this. And I did it from my home only because we didn't have another place where people could come that very first Friday. The Rebbe wanted it to be days after he spoke, which was Friday of Shabbos Shuva, and the Rebbe wanted to distribute it on Friday, so maybe there'll be girls that will like this, that Friday. We can distribute a tremendous amount, and then Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, and Erev Yom Kippur, I'm sure all of you know, that the Rebbe would give a piece of Lekach to all the men, a piece of Lekach of Shanda Toiva Musuka. Now, those of you who have gone for Lekach, remember feeling all the of standing and waiting for this holy bracha at this holy time, Erev Yom Kippur. For some reason, I'm not going to go into it, I was told to come for Lekach also for many years, and I did go every year. And that year, uh, Erev Yom Kippur, I'm standing, and my husband near me, and with a lot of trepidation, waiting for this holy bracha, this bracha for life. But instead of giving me the bracha, the Rebbe said, dimes? Do you still have enough dimes? And I had so no about money. I didn't understand what he meant. Dimes, money. I'm waiting for bracha for life, and the Rebbe is talking about money. So my husband had to remind me that the Rebbe is asking about the dimes for the girls. And then I said, oh. And then I went like this. I said, Ihabna Abyssal. I took my two fingers to show because I just had a few dimes left. And when I tell that to the Rebbe, the Rebbe put his hand in his pocket and took out 10 
packages of rolled up dimes that come from the bank and he put them in my hands. I didn't have a pocketbook, so he put them in my hands. And I was wondering, how am I going to get the liquor? And then he put his pocket, his hand in his second pocket, and he took out another bunch of dimes and put them in my husband's hand. My hands were full. I still don't remember how we got the liquor. Maybe they had to put the liquor on top of the dimes when my hands were taken. And then the husband said, I did want the Friday to pass, and perhaps you don't have enough dimes, and there will be a little girl somewhere that won't light candles for Yom Kippur. He didn't want Yom Kippur to pass, I'm sorry. He didn't want Yom Kippur to pass. So maybe there's a girl somewhere that's not going to get a dime because I don't have enough. So the husband was standing there for such a long time till I came with these dimes in his pocket. Now you try to hold so many th- 2,000 dimes in your pockets. That's what happened that first, that was the first very exciting thing. I saw from that that the Hebrew cares about every little girl. It wasn't just the thousands of, or the th- hundreds of or millions of girls all over, every one little girl. And so decided we have to go and do something. So we started doing a massive campaign. And we announced that we're going to, we explain the importance of lighting Shabbos candles and the radio would only accept our ad if we, we put commercial value to it. So we had to sell something. And we said, if you need a set of candle holders, we will send us $1 because otherwise they would accept the ad. Send us $1, we'll send you the candle holders. We got so many requests from people for the candle holders. The dollar didn't even cover anything. It was just to do something so we could get the ad placed. They wouldn't do it without that. But one Friday, and I have to tell you, lady, attention, all of you who are listening, I said, ladies, I'm used to talking to women, I'm sorry, uh, that... Of, it was a Friday, 45 minutes before I had to light my candles, I get a telephone call from the Rebbe's office that the Rebbe got a letter from a lady that sent in a dollar to him. The lady misheard the, re, the ad. The ad said, please send a dollar to Lubavitch Women's Organization at 770. But this lady did not hear that, so she wrote to Lubavitch Rebbe at 770. And the Rebbe got the letter, and the Rebbe sent a message to me that I should see to it that she likes today. Now, I'm looking at this, uh, this, I'm getting this phone call from the Rebbe's office. It's 45 minutes before I have to light my candles. How can I get candlesticks to this lady? So I said, well, I'll take her name and address, and I'll call her on the phone. Maybe she has candle holders at home. Some people do have it, even, you know, even those years people had it. I take her name and address, and I call information. Those days we called 411, and they had no listing. I was hysterical. If I ever wants her to light today, she has to light today. So I look at the address, and we see that she's about 15 or 60 minutes away from my house. So 15 minutes one way, 15 minutes the other way is 30, a few minutes to talk to her, and I'll make it in time to my, light my shop's candles. So I ran with two of my children and a few packages of candlesticks. I fly down to this address. I remember I double parked, not even thinking of what's going to be with the car. I'm just going to speak to her for a minute. It's just going to take a minute, right? I go into this tremendous apartment building, and her apartment was on the right side. I ring her bell. I still can be ringing her bell today because this lady did not answer. I, she doesn't answer. She's not home. But they haven't wanted a light today, so what should I do? So we started writing, ringing the bells of all the neighbors. Nobody was home. It was a sunny Friday afternoon, and nobody was home. That building had a very big lobby, and across the lobby there were more apartments. I said, let's go there. Maybe somebody's home there. So we rang every bell. I had my daughter's ringing. And suddenly, an elderly lady opens the door. And she says, hello, what do you need? And she doesn't hear well, so she's talking very loud. I said, I'm looking for Mrs. Hera. She says, oh, okay, she's my friend. I said, she doesn't have a phone. I'm trying to reach her. She has a phone, but it's not home. But she's not home. Oh, she's home. I said, but she doesn't answer the bell. So she said, well, she can't hear the bell. She can't hear Come, I'll tell you what to do. So we all go, this lady with my daughters and I, we go across and we bang on the door. And suddenly, Mrs. Hera opens the door. Already it was getting so late. And I say, Mrs. Hera, Mrs. Hera, did you write a letter to the Baba Cherebbe that you want to light Shabbos candles? So she says in Yiddish, Ich will ben shalich. Well, I was hysterical. A lady who says, Ich will ben shalich in Yiddish, why is she not letting? Why does she need my candle holders? So I said, why do you need my candle holders if you know what lich bench it is? So she says, come in, I want to show you something. It was so late, I had no time, but I went in. 
in, in her closet on the very top shelf was her candelabra that when she moved to this apartment her children put a candelabra all the way up and they never come to visit her unfortunately and she said i can't climb up she's a very short old lady she couldn't climb up so i don't have a candelabra to light so i can't light and when i heard on the radio that you can send me candlesticks i was so happy i will bed I want to tell you that this story was the catalyst of everything. This showed me how the Rebbe cared, the Rebbe heard her soul. Through her letter, the Rebbe heard her soul that she wants to bench look so badly. Then she told me, do you know how many friends I have like me in the senior citizens group that also eat the catalyst of catalyst? All the candlesticks were stolen, and they can't light because they don't have candlesticks. If you call me after Shabbos, I'll tell you where to go, and you'll reach hundreds and hundreds of women like me that also need candle holders. So through that one story, when the Rebbe sent me on Friday, hair of Shabbos, so late, I barely came home in time to bench my own candles on time. The Rebbe heard her soul that she wants to light, and we realized that every single woman wants to light and is once needs us, and we have to go and find them. I want to just tell you something very quickly. I think a lot of you have seen this candle holder. Uh, those of you that don't know, when we started, there was a manufacturer in Brooklyn that offered to make us candlesticks, and the original candlestick he made was a very tall one with a very small, a much smaller base. And I quickly was using the candlesticks. We made appointments with schools, and I I'm sorry to say I never showed it to the Rebbe because I was just in a hurry to start giving them out. I wrote to the Rebbe report every single week, and I wrote that we're giving out a lot of candlesticks. And then one day I get a call from the office, the Rebbe's office, that the Rebbe wants a sticker to go on the bottom of the candle holder on the base where the girl can write her name and the school's name. And the Rebbe said that will encourage the principals to support this campaign, that the principals see the name of the school. They're going to tell the children to light. So within one day, I got somebody to make me a very beautiful sticker, and it was on the candle holder. I sent it into the Rebbe's office. I came home from the Rebbe's office, it takes me five minutes by car to come to my house, and there's a phone call, Rabbi Grota was on the phone, and, the, and Rabbi Grota said, the Rebbe said to ask you, with what right are you giving out a candlestick that is not stable, that is dangerous, it could be a danger for the child. You have to stop using that candle holder. I burst out crying because everything I'm doing is for the Rebbe, and the Rebbe is not happy. I, I, it was so terrible for me. I said, so what should we do? He said, well, you have to make another candle holder. I tried to reach the person, the manufacturer. There was something about his number. I couldn't reach him for a few days. And it was eating me up inside because I couldn't use the candle holders. We were making appointments. Finally, when I reached him, he said, I don't even know what to do. So he went and made five different styles. And they were sent into the Rebbe. And the Rebbe was not happy with any one of the styles that he made. And the Rebbe told, this is what Rabbi Grona told me. The Rebbe chose the cap of one. The circle of a second candle, a candle holder, and the base, this three and a half circumference base of a fourth, and it should be stable when it's on the table. It will not tilt over because it's stable. The Rebbe designed this candlestick. I think I told you that I sent a report to the Rebbe. I happen to have sent a report to the Rebbe every Friday. Every Friday, because the very first report I sent, I sent on a Friday, and I got a very beautiful answer from the Rebbe that he was so happy the good news about the lighting of Shabbos candles. that I received that he received Friday afternoon close to the time of lighting candles. So I decided that Friday afternoon is the best time to send in a report every week. And every week I send in a report. And I used to write all the little stories of people that wrote that they started lighting and their daughter light, uh, the, the neighbor started to light. All these little stories, I thought the head would be very happy. And I always got a very beautiful answer, a very beautiful thank you. After about two or three years, I realized, I was told that the month of El Olam is very serious, and I thought to myself, maybe I shouldn't bother the Rebbe every week, because if he's so serious, El I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to let three weeks go by, because that's going to be a hot dog. On the third week, I'm going to write, but two weeks, I'm going to not bother. The Rebbe has so much to do. On the third week, I sat down to write, and I usually don't answer the phone when I'm writing to the Rebbe. 
But the phone was ringing, and then they called back again and again, like as if it's an emergency. So I did go to answer the phone, and it was Rabbi Klein, one of the Rebbe's secretaries, and he called up to say, Esther, I just was by the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said to me to call you up to call me to ask that it's almost three weeks and he did hear a report about Neshek. I couldn't believe that the Rebbe is counting the weeks of when I wrote the last time a report. That's how I knew that the Rebbe cares so much. He has to know so much about what's going on with Neshek. I made sure that we do things so I can write a report because how can I write a report if we're not doing anything? Okay, I want to tell you the far-reaching effect of everything we do, even if it's one candle. Uh, I don't know how much time I have to talk, so I'm just going to tell you this one story that's just so so touching to me. Uh, I teach at Base Rifka High School, and I'm very excited the very first day of school to meet who the girls are. Some of them are children of students in the past, and a girl, she has a name that I, I her name was Etol Mino Riku. I never heard that last name. Very sweet girl. I just checked off her name. And then I'm giving the first lesson. And this girl is smiling with a tremendous smile the entire time. Mm-hmm. I can imagine what is so interesting to her that she's smiling. And when the class was over, she walks over to me. She says, Mrs. Sternberg, I want to tell you that because of you, because of one candle, my grandmother became religious. And because she became religious, my mother is religious. And because my mother's religious, I'm religious. So I'm in base Rifka all these years later. Because you gave a candle all those years ago to my grandma. So for all of us listening to this, what we're talking about here is how to reach every single woman, every single girl, and to realize that we can change the life of a person by getting them interested in Ben Shilich. This is what they have been wanted, and this is what they have been gave us the Kayach to do. And I'll never forget how my father used to say that whenever the Rebbe gives you a job to do, there's an Asinas Kayach. The Rebbe is giving you the power to be able to do it. So he's asking us, and he's also enabling us to do it. Uh, well, originally, in 1977, the Rebbe asked for a book to be made of compositions that girls wrote. The teacher sent in a lot of compositions from girls that wrote about how they feel about lighting candles. And we produced a book called A Candle of My Own. Two years later, I happened to have a problem. I was paralyzed on one side and I wasn't able to do anything. And I was very blue and I decided I have to do something. Maybe we make another contest. Uh, this was my idea, not the Rebbe's idea. And I was not going to make a book because the Rebbe told me to make a book the first time. But this was just to get children inspired. And I asked the Rebbe if it's a good idea to make a contest. And he said yes. So we made a contest and the contest was over before Purim. And we got a very a lot of beautiful com- uh, entries and we gave the girls prizes and as far as I'm concerned that's the end of the story however one day when I was much better I was able to walk I was shopping and I called home to my husband to hear what's going on at home and he says Esther sit down because I was gonna be very shocked about something I wasn't able to sit I was in a store and he finally told me that there was a message from the where is the second book of these compositions now I never thought of making a book and the Rebbe said But whatever my answer would be, it should be published before Rosh Hashanah of this year. I was hysterical. How do I, this is just one month before Rosh Hashanah. How am I going to print a book if I didn't plan anything? And I was so hysterical until I came home. I came home and I started calling somebody for an idea how the second book could be different from the first book. I did not know J.J. Gross at the time. I called somebody else that I was recommended, and they suggested the book would be different because the first one was artwork and the second was photography. So I quickly sent a photographer to Camp Ebuna that was in the last two days of camp in the country that he should take pictures of girls lighting candles because we need various pictures for the book. I also called the lady in charge of the activities. Could you run a contest tomorrow? A quick contest. Girls should write compositions. Maybe I'll get something more interesting. And I said, because I know you have girls there from Russia this year, and I know that you have girls from Persia, see if you can get something in a Russian language from a Russian-speaking girl and some from a Persian girl. And sure enough, she sent me something very beautiful, a composition from a girl called Laura Bravender that just had come from Russia before the summer and right away was transported to camp. And she wrote something very beautiful. And as a result of that, uh, we put it into the book. Of course, we put it in the book. We're very proud of it. And that was in 1979. 
And all the way back 12 years ago, so many years later, I was contacted by a friend of hers that said, Mrs. Sternberg, I saw the book in somebody's house yesterday. And I saw a composition list written by somebody called Laura that I know. She lives in Philadelphia also. And I know that she doesn't light Shabbos candles, although in her composition she wrote how much she wants to do it. But unfortunately, when she came home, her parents discouraged her. So this woman, a friend of Laura's, her name is Yana, she said, would you send me a copy of the book? I'll show it to Laura. Maybe this is going to change her life. I said, I only have two copies left. I really don't want to give it away. And she said, but you could change her life. So I said, okay, if I could change somebody's life, I'll give away a copy. And I sent it to this friend of hers, Yana. For three weeks, I didn't hear anything. And I thought I probably lost the book and probably nothing happened with it. However, that one Sunday, three weeks later, I got a phone call from somebody very sweet called Laura. At that time, her name was Laura Fisher. And she wanted to tell me what happened to her the Shabbos before. This was Sunday. What happened on Shabbos? And it has to do with a book, a candle of my own. So Laura's husband is on Gary is with us now, and he's going to tell you what happened that Shabbos and what happened as a result. And Gary, please unmute yourself. Okay, is this working? Yes, thank you. Wonderful. So yes, it's 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 my pleasure to share with you uh, the story I've been hearing over and over. So that particular Shabbos, uh, Yana and her uh, daughters uh, made a special. Uh, uh, gift, basically, a, a, a presentation of sharing this book that they received and presented to Laura and tried to help her remember, because uh, what Laura mentioned is the fact that she did not recall this happening at all. Uh, she was uh, only 12 years old. She told us many times that uh, uh, when they arrived to New Brunswick, uh, as the family was, was hosted, her parents were offered an opportunity to have her sent to camp. And she always pointed out the fact that uh, growing up in Russia, it was considered to be a privilege to be spending summertime in a camp. So her parents, of course, were thrilled to send her over. So when she went to that camp, they had absolutely no uh, idea that it would be a religious experience and uh, the girls, and Laura often mentions the fact that it's it's were tough girls from Brooklyn who she didn't know how to deal with. And she doesn't even remember uh, where the, the clothes came from, the skirts and everything that she would have to wear. And within 30 days, she basically knew all the prayers by heart and she was governing and participating in all the uh, mitzvahs that uh, was involved. Of course, when she came home, uh, her parents were not uh, aware of how to be, uh, properly support or even encourage or they basically let things uh uh, work on their own, and unfortunately, over the years, uh, she did not participate in uh, uh, lighting the candles or or praying. But uh, through the years, uh, we've after we became married and uh, had children, we came across uh, circumstances that allowed us to learn and participate and benefit from going through um, the reform, conservative, and then uh, through Chabad, we became fully observant Jews. But as a result of Yana, going back to the story, when Yana brought us the book, it introduced Laura once again to feel how important it is to uh, light the candle. So this was 12 years ago, and I'm mentioning the fact that we are observant now, that's the, the evolution of our interaction. 